Thanks for tuning in. I'm Michael Watson, and this is the Influence Watch podcast. In this episode, we look behind the curtain of a massive dark money entity that funds left-of-center advocacy. The National Education Association's annual report illustrates the teachers' union's massive left-wing political involvement, and we issue a caution to those pushing to restrain business from being business. The Wellspring Philanthropic Fund is a $253 million entity that funnels anonymous gifts. Its former name was Matan Besetter Foundation, Hebrew for Anonymous Gift Fund, to any number of left-wing political advocacy groups. Now Hayden Ludwig, investigative researcher for our parent group Capital Research Center, has dredged beneath the ocean of dark money behind the Wellspring Philanthropic Fund to put together a comprehensive report on what can be known about the Wellspring network. In Ludwig's words, he called the Wellspring Matan Besetter setup Byzantine by design. And it is. Using a network of privately held limited liability companies and donor-advised funds that add opaqueness to philanthropic monetary flows, three quantitative finance investors created what Philanthropy News Digest called anonymous private foundations funded and controlled by limited liability companies to avoid almost all public scrutiny of their activities. So who are the three finance guys? Frederick Taylor, a Democratic political donor, Andrew Schechtel, a Republican political donor, and David Gelbaum, a close ally of the environmentalist movement, who reportedly, as of 2004, had given $100 million to the Sierra Club and $250 million to the environmentalist movement as a whole. Gelbaum claimed credit for helping move the environmentalist movement from anti-immigration to pro-immigration, reportedly having told then-Sierra Club executive director Carl Pope that he would cut the group's funding off if it, quote, ever came out as anti-immigration. And Wellspring is deeply tied to other major left-wing networks, the most prominent of which is the Funders Committee for Civic Participation, a network of 90 influential left-of-center advocacy groups that coordinates funding of voter registration and get out the vote for left-of-center organizations, as well as census and other demographic-related advocacy. For more on the Wellspring Philanthropic Fund, its associated entities, and its background, read Ludwig's piece, Dark Oceans, Dredging the Wellspring Philanthropic Fund. The National Education Association, NEA, Teachers Union, released its annual report for its 2018-19 fiscal year at the end of November. Mike Antonucci, labor reporter for education policy website The 74, noted that the NEA's report showed the union spent over $4.6 million on state-level ballot initiative groups, just the tip of the political machine that the nation's largest labor union operates. Union members contribute $20 a year to the NEA's Ballot Measure and Legislative Crises Fund, per Antonucci, The fund held a war chest of $49 million as of last March. The fund supports the union's lobbying and ballot measure efforts. While lobbying efforts are often routed through subordinate bodies of the union, ballot measure contributions are disclosed as spending to the committee, and therefore can be tracked under the Labor Management and Reporting and Disclosure Act. So what sorts of measures did the NEA support in 2018-19? In Utah, Colorado, and Missouri, the NEA backed efforts to take redistricting powers away from state legislators. For an idea of what the outcome of such a change could be, consider that California's ostensibly independent redistricting commission drew a map after the 2010 census that is indistinguishable in partisan outcome from an aggressive Democratic gerrymander. In Oregon, the NEA funded multi-measure campaigns that defended the ability of the state to tax groceries, defended the state law restricting state and local law enforcement officials' ability to cooperate with federal immigration authorities, and opposed a ban on public funding of abortion. In Wisconsin and Maine, the NEA funded long-standing liberal state-level activism groups. In Florida, the NEA opposed a proposed reduction in property taxes and opposed an amendment to require a supermajority in the state legislature to raise state taxes. And in Colorado, Arizona, and Los Angeles County, California, the NEA pushed for tax increases. And in Oklahoma, the NEA backed a group that sued to keep the repeal of a tax increase off the statewide ballot. In short, The NEA backed the full spectrum of the progressive liberal agenda just in its ballot measure spending in one year. Abortion? Yes. Democratic favoring electoral changes? Also yes. Tax hikes? You bet. And how does the union stand as a whole? Antonucci's analysis of the NEA's filings showed that the union lost almost 30,000 members, though 19,000 of that loss came from a local union, the California Faculty Association, disaffiliating from the NEA. Meanwhile, spending on politics and lobbying rose by over a third. Led by Darren Walker, the president of the enormous and very left-wing Ford Foundation, a number of progressive activists are pressuring businesses to adopt what the Chronicle of Philanthropy calls a kinder form of capitalism, or so-called inclusive capitalism, 
a more regulated, less purist form of the market economy than the supposedly free market absolutist perspective that left-wingers say has prevailed in recent decades. In this, they resemble a number of right-of-center nationalist figures who advocate common good capitalism and similar status schemes. The number and prominence of the grantmakers involved in the Ford Foundation's effort, even beyond the Ford Foundation, is substantial. The Economic Security Project, a left-wing economically policy outfit targeting technology firms, organized by Facebook co-founder and former owner of the liberal news magazine The New Republic, Chris Hughes, has donors including the Open Society Foundations of George Soros, the Amidyar Network of Pierre Amidyar, and the Hewlett Foundation, among numerous others. Pressure has risen enough that the normally pro-business coalition of executives business roundtable issued a statement, quote, rejecting the notion that shareholder returns should be corporate America's overriding objective. The Ford Foundation's Walker advised the group drafting the manifesto. But Capital Research Center's president, Scott Walter, has a couple of cautions to issue. First, if capitalism itself is tainted, then surely the Ford Foundation's money, generated by the profits of the market economy, should be redistributed. And second, nonprofit and grant-making institution officials often oppose efforts to make them operate more like for-profit companies. Walter suggested, I don't think Mr. Walker or the average foundation executive has a deep understanding of the way businesses operate, and to dictate that they should operate differently seems like a combination of ignorance and arrogance. Walker, Hughes, and the upscale professional class left aren't the only faction pushing to set aside the normal order of business in the market economy. A number of -of right-of-center figures are pushing a similar effort, with activist Ned Run going so far as to demand the overturn of landmark free speech jurisprudence that has benefited right-of-center advocacy because it supposedly empowered the vulture capitalist class. Like the faction of conservatives who propose empowering major labor unions, conservatives who support setting aside freedom and advocacy speech would be making an enormous blunder that would empower the institutional financial networks on the left. And I see at least two problems with turning on the free market economy as a way to attack the straw man of unfettered capitalism. First of all, uh, the American market economy is, and always has been, fettered by taxation, legislation, regulation, and informal custom. Turning on the market would also be the biggest gift that the socialist movement that Darren Walker's Ford Foundation spends millions every year supporting could ever receive. That's our show for this week. If you're listening to this on YouTube, we encourage you to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher. And if you have subscribed, thank you. And please leave us a five-star rating. We'll see you next week.